Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. You know where you are, the nine at nine with me, Tigo. And if you're watching right now, you know we got an amazing expert coming up today. But this expert is a superhero. Hmm. Now, what did I mean by that? Guess what? Sit right there. We'll be right back. Hey, yeah, you heard me right, superhero. Well, let's just say she's on a superhero journey. Valerie David is here, the Pink Hulk. Mm -hmm. Hi. What's happening, Valerie? Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, we gotta kick it off because I said you're a superhero and I know you're on the superhero journey, but the Pink Hulk, hmm, what's that mean? Yes, the Pink Hulk is one woman's journey to find the superhero within. And it's my one woman show, award-winning show that I've done all over the United States and in Europe, in Iceland, Finland, Sweden, and England. And it's my chronicling of my inspirational, motivational journey of becoming a three-time cancer survivor. First of uh, lymphoma and then breast cancer and then breast cancer again, stage four metastatic breast cancer with no wow. evidence of disease. Wow. So it's, it's, and I want people out there to know that we all have a superhero inside of ourselves and we have that inner superhero to fight any adversity in life, not just cancer. And that's why the show has resonated because it's more than just cancer. It's about fighting back any challenges and having hope. And the last line of my show is never, ever, ever give up. And that's, that's the message amazing. that we have for this show. You know, we've had um, my business partner and best friend, we lost her to breast cancer. We've had breast cancer around us, some kind of cancer around us for, for years and years and years. And the hardest thing of all of it, besides the chemo and that red devil, the hardest thing of all of it is keeping the mind right. You know, how do you do it? How do you keep your mind focused on the goal of getting better and getting back to you? Well, I think the greatest thing that's helped me is empowering myself. And I want to tell people out there to be your own best patient advocate. Uh, mm -hmm. Speak up, uh, you know, make sure you have a team of doctors around you that believe in your survival and that they are behind you 100%. And I've been very lucky with that, having family and friends rally around you, the doctors. And I also say to never, ever feel ashamed to get help. And I think mm. that, you know, and I know for myself, you know, I, I have this Hulk, Hulk persona, the superhero beyond DC and Marvel. I have my own superhero squad. And, you know, even the pink Hulk gets frustrated and down. But, you know, I, I think the important thing, especially in these times, is to ask for help and, and, and say, you know, if I'm hurting, let people know and people are there to help you. And I think the most important thing is to realize that whenever there's a bump in the road, the, the bump smooths out and the road will be smooth again. And I think having that inside of you, knowing that this too shall pass. And I think for me, that being my own best patient advocate was speaking up. And this is part of the show that I was allergic to one of the chemo drugs and I couldn't Ooh. breathe. And I kept, I was like, this isn't right. This isn't normal. And I remember my doctor was like, oh, we'll get you to a pulmonologist to check the breathing. And it never happened. And I called up uh, the doctor's office and I made the appointment. I said, are you open today? Because it was New Year's Eve day, uh, New Year's Eve day. And, I, and they're like, uh, yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm coming over. I didn't even <laughs> ask for an appointment. I just came there and just sat there. And I was like, I'm going to be seen. And it turned out that when I got a series of tests done, that I was allergic to the drug and they took me off oh, the wow. drug. So I think it's wow. really important to speak up. And also we know that uh, bankruptcy happens with a lot of uh, health care bills and the out-of-pocket expenses and health mm -hmm. insurance not covering everything. 
And I also had a bill twice I had a huge bill and I called up the finance department of the hospital and they said, oh, we'll put you on a payment plan. And I said, um, no, I'd like these bills to be pardoned. <laughs> they pardon the bills. So you have to- Wow, I didn't know they do that. They do that. See, Tigo, wow. they do that. You just have to speak up. And you know, it's also good to have someone come with you to appointments and write down notes. Um, you know, find um I think meditation has been so wonderful to me. And there's a free meditation app that uh, I use that's uh called Insight Timer, and there are many other apps out there like Calm. Mm -hmm. But I feel like meditating has really helped a lot. And for me, Tigo, I have to get checked every six weeks for the rest of my life. So uh, though I have no evidence of disease, I have to be monitored. So how do I cope with every six weeks coming into the doctor's office, getting the appointment, getting the lab work done, and then I have to get a PET scan every six months for the rest of my life. But you know wow. what? I, that's part of who I am. That's, that's just the way it is. And I have a choice right? I have that choice mm -hmm. to say, oh, oh, I've got my appointment, you know, or do I say I'm going to, you know, take the bull by the horns, take, go to my appointment um, and just what, what, whatever comes, you know, just do the best that I can, but to get myself mentally ready for these appointments and knowing that I have that choice uh, to, to either fold or blossom. And I choose to blossom. You know, and that brings up others. a question. Yeah, that brings up a question because, you know, I, like I said, I've had people around me for decades that have been fighting cancer, going through cancer. And one of the things I notice is, you know, you have this tendency, they have this tendency to want to shut all the doors and go dark and just pull away from everything. And you are not only out there, but you're on stages, you're traveling all over the world. You're, you're truly out there. What do you, what advice do you give to people who say, you know what, I'm fighting cancer right now. I'm just going to shut everything down and just sit in front of my television and wait for my next chemo appointment. What do you tell people to get them out of that funk? Absolutely. And thank you for bringing that up. That's an excellent question. Uh, I have talkbacks after the shows, and that's where I talk about those uh, coping mechanisms. And I also coach as well and help people and work with cancer organizations. I would say to not shut that door, keep those doors open and find funny things, watch funny movies, watch mm -hmm. funny TV shows, do something you love, pick up a hobby, whether it's knitting or start reading books, you know, start um, like I, I love improv. And even while I was in treatment, Tigo, with you know, in between chemos. And when I felt well enough, I actually performed improv with a scarf on my head and no hair. You know, I just do things that you love and don't let things stop you. You know, if you can just find something you love to do and do it, paint, write, uh, do improv, find a physical activity that gets your mind off of things, reach out for help. There's a plenty of support groups from uh, support groups and one-on-one -on -one counseling that's out there for all cancer patients. So I think that if you just keep that positive mindset, meditate, and I still do that. I meditate twice a day. So just to, to keep that positive attitude and keep positive people around you, that's also things, you know, I remember I had a, uh, um, uh, somebody say to me, oh, you're not going to live a long life. So too bad. And I'm like, okay, bye. You know, oh, you know goodness. get rid of those people that drain <laughs> you be around positive people. Cause positive begets positive. There it is. I now, before we get cut important. off, because you know, Alan's got his finger on the hot button before <laughs> we get cut off here. What I know you're going to be performing your show this spring you know, right, in 2023 right. for everybody that's out there watching reruns in 2035. In 2023, you're performing reruns this, I mean, performing your show this spring. What you're yeah. sure about and what can they expect when they attend? Sure. So um, it's, uh, you can find me on pinkhulkplay.com and uh, you'll find my schedule there. And what they could expect is laughter and humor in the face of cancer and that they're going to walk away feeling inspired, empowered, and ready to face the world. And again, with a lot of humor, it's a very funny show.
and a little bit of uh, adult. <laughs> well, so Miss Valerie, Miss Pink Hulk, I want to thank you so thank much for you. coming and spending a little time with me. I hope you'll come back and hang out more often because I would love, love to know where to. you're at, what you're doing. Maybe we can even get you on stage here. That somewhere. I would love that. And you'll see the website will give the synopsis of the show, the promo video. Awesome. So I'll leave it to the to all of you guys to look at the website and you'll get all the information. Awesome. But it's a, it's I, a really yes, thank I you. I thank you so much for being on the show. You're absolutely amazing. We'll have you back soon. You are thank our you. superhero. Thank you. The Hulk. The Hulk. <laughs> the Pink Hulk. <laughs> Cancer Smash. <laughs> All right, Thank everybody. You. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know I want you to come back next time. Yeah, we're going to work on getting her into, you know, maybe the power of pink or something. We'll see what happens. Hey, come back as soon as you can. We're on every day. I'm Tigo. I'll talk to you next time.